Despite decades of research and billions of dollars spent, effective treatment for Alzheimer's remains elusive. But a groundbreaking new study from Harvard Medical School published in Nature may change that. Researchers discovered that among 27 metals analyzed in human brains, lithium is uniquely and consistently depleted in both mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's. When they tested lithium orotate in mouse models, it completely prevented memory decline and restored normal cognitive function. All at doses so low, lithium acts more like a micronutrient than a drug. So what did the researchers find? They performed a metallomic analysis, a detailed study of metal levels, on brain tissues from over 400 individuals, ranging from healthy to those with mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's. They focused on the prefrontal cortex, a key area damaged early in Alzheimer's, comparing it to the cerebellum, which is typically spared. Remarkably, lithium was the only metal among the 27 that showed a consistent 20 to 30% reduction in concentrations in the prefrontal cortex of affected individuals, while levels in the cerebellum remained normal. This finding was confirmed in samples from independent research centers. Although compelling, this raised a big question. Does lithium deficiency cause Alzheimer's or is it simply a consequence? To answer this, the team mapped lithium distribution in brain tissue at microscopic detail using laser absorption mass spectrometry. They discovered that amyloid plaques, clumps of proteins that mark Alzheimer's, contained three to four times higher lithium concentrations than nearby healthy brain areas. This suggests a vicious cycle. Plaques sequester lithium away from healthy brain cells. As lithium declines, microglia, the brain's immune cells, become less able to clear amyloid. This leads to more plaques, which trap more lithium, further depleting the brain's supply. Experimentally inducing lithium deficiency in mice worsened Alzheimer's pathology, including plaques, tau protein, abnormalities, inflammation, and memory loss. Importantly, lithium carbonate which is used as the standard treatment in psychiatry, gets trapped by plaques. Lithium orotate, however, evades this capture and remains available to the neurons. Within just five weeks of a lithium de deficient diet, mice showed a dramatic rise in amyloid beta protein in the hippocampus, the memory center. Tau proteins became hyperphosphorylated chemically modified in a way linked with harmful tangles, characteristic of Alzheimer's, up to three to four times more than in controls. Synapses, the connections between neurons, significantly diminished, weakening communication. Myelin, the insulating layer critical for fast nerve signals, broke down as cells producing it decreased, A microglia shifted from being protective to being inflammatory. Behaviorally, lithium deficient mice struggled with memory tasks like maze navigation and object recognition. Notably, this happened both in genetically engineered Alzheimer's mice and normal wild type mice. Illustrating, lithium deficiency alone can trigger these changes. Gene expression analysis showed lithium deficiency altered patterns in brain cells similar to those seen in Alzheimer's patients. At incredibly low doses, about 0.03 milligrams of elemental lithium per liter of water, lithium orotate nearly stopped plaque formation in young Alzheimer's prone mice. In older mice, it reduced plaques by 70%. Most strikingly, memory tests showed complete recovery to normal levels. Wild type aging mice treated with lithium orotate also maintained learning and memory better than untreated controls. Long-term treatment showed no kidney, thyroid, or other toxic effects common with high-dose lithium carbonate used in psychiatry. Lithium orotate preserved synapses, myelin, and normalized brain immune response, while lithium carbonate at the same dose showed little therapeutic effect. 
So what is actually happening at the cellular level? Lithium regulates a key protein called GSK3 beta, which controls brain cell processes. Normally, lithium keeps GSK3 beta activity in check. Without enough lithium, GSK3 beta becomes overactive, leading to tau phosphorylation, synapse loss, harmful inflammation from microglia, and myelin breakdown, all of which drive Alzheimer's progression. Inhibiting GSK3 beta in lithium deficient mice reversed many pathological changes. This protein central role explains lithium orotate's wide ranging effects, restoring core brain function that maintain cognition. So what could this mean for humans? Observational studies show regions with naturally higher lithium in drinking water have lower dementia rates. Some small trials with low dose lithium carbonate also suggest cognitive benefits, but that form gets trapped by plaques. No clinical trials have yet tested lithium orotate specifically. Scale to humans, the effective dose would be very low, around 120 micrograms daily for a 70 kilogram adult. This is well below typical supplement levels and far below psychiatric doses known for toxicity. The data suggests lithium should be viewed more as an essential micronutrient for brain health akin to vitamin D or omega-3. The next critical step is rigorous human clinical trials testing lithium orotate for cognitive protection. Meanwhile, this research highlights how nutritional factors we're only beginning to understand may be key to tackling age-related diseases like Alzheimer's. It's worth noting that some people, including myself, are already taking low-dose lithium orotate supplements while we wait for human clinical trials. The safety margins seem wide, but everyone's situation is different. Alzheimer's is thought to be multifactorial. Could such a simple factor as lithium deficiency be one of the key factors? Share your thoughts in the comments. If this breakdown was helpful, subs please subscribe for more updates on cutting edge longevity research. Thank you for your attention.